All right, guys, Nameless here, and I finally have decided on my top 30. Now, it might not be perfect, and there might be some people I miss, but keep in mind, making a Call of Duty top 30 list is extremely difficult. It took me a week to do this um, and to make like a criteria. Uh, and then obviously my opinion had to come into play as well. If you just do a criteria, the list will almost never come out how you want it to look. Um, and what you truly believe. So there is some opinion in here and how individual performances, uh, you know, took effect in some of these games. Uh, but yeah, let's go through it. This video is gonna be 30 through 21, and then we'll do, you know, 21 all the way down to, to 10, and then we'll do 10 through one. Obviously it'll be three videos, um, but right now let's focus on the the later part of it 30 through 21 so let's get into it man so yes guys uh the things that i was looking at was how long the player played how many championships they got how many mvps they got uh and basically how good they played across a, a mass amount of games right that has to come into effect and then the player's individual skill um so those things to me uh and i've been around since the very beginning right so i've been through every single era of call of duty um and for me i tried to be as unbiased as i possibly could uh, and I think I made a pretty damn good list. So let's start it out with number 30. Number 30 is going to be Zuma. Now thinking about Zuma and his come up into Call of Duty. In Call of Duty Ghost, he came out of nowhere and he was one of the best amateur players in the entire league. And then he won a championship when he went pro. And then from then on out, the guy was just lights out. He picked up seven different championships. He was part of one of the greatest Call of Duty teams ever in that phase roster that was able to take down the Optic Dynasty and for Zuma, he had a pretty great career. I mean, you think about his career through AW, and then you think about what he did when he went to World War II when he won that championship. Like for Zuma, it's been a, a he had a, a couple tough moments throughout his career, but usually he, his teams are in the discussion to be a top four roster. So for him, he comes in that 30th spot. The guy has done a great job, uh, especially post career. Um, and I think he had some more time left in him, right? So for him, he competed over a long time, picked up some championships along the way, and he left his mark. Coming in at number 29, we have Sam LaRue Octane. Now, Sam made the top 30 list. Uh, this guy across, you know, Black Ops 4, dating all the way back to AW. He was one of the best ARs, if not in the discussion for the best AR, which is a span of like four games. So looking at him, he came in in AW. He was one of the best players in the game. Obviously, there were some way better teams than what he was on, but he did some damage. Then from then, the guy was just absolutely disgusting. Picks up nine different championships across those four titles i mean his resume speaks for himself uh for octane he's finally found himself back in a spot that he really enjoys and he has a a, a lot of years to move up on this list but for me right now i could not put him above the other 28 players that i have listed on this top 30. Coming in at number 28, we have Nade Shot. 10 championships across three titles and an X Games gold medal. Now, that X Games gold medal is very important. And those 10 championships, he was a part of the OG dynasty. So a couple of those are like, ah, you know, that team was just really, really good compared to their opposition. But looking at Nade Shot, I mean, the guy had a great career. Uh, he was very good at Ghost. He had some success in Black Ops 2. Um, and he was he was just a good player, man. Like, people like to hate on Nade Shot. But if you go back and you watch some of the Search and Destroy games, that he had the guy was able to take over in certain moments like thinking about call of duty ghost thinking about regionals they almost didn't make it to champs if it weren't for nade shot going off on that freight s d they wouldn't have made it so there were moments where he literally single-handedly dominated for the squad to get them into a great position i mean he's got a top four at the call of duty championships he's got the cod in ghost and he's got the cod xp win which obviously it was a little bit weird with the rules but he still won that tournament so what he did in call of duty and being a pioneer and having that amount of pressure no no other player in the history of COD outside of Skump has ever experienced the kind of pressure that Nate Shot experienced and to still pick up 10 championships and an X game gold medal, really impressive. You got to give him a shout. He deserves to be in the top 30. Anybody who says otherwise is completely wrong. I've watched everyone play and I know Nate Shot was very good during the time that he competed. Coming in at number 27, we have Pristini. Now, looking at Pristini's career, he obviously has the World Championship, uh, where he won in Black Ops 4, which was a massive prize for Andrew Grant, and then he has the, the playoffs win in 2019 uh, in Black Ops 4 as well. So they won the back-to-back -back tournaments, which was huge. And then he has the IW tournament that he won with e United, uh, and he's just been consistent over those two games. Uh, obviously, he's had a tough career in the last two, but for him, that World Championship and how well that he played, and then also 
being on that EU team that was just so good throughout IW, I had to put him on this list at number 27. I know there's some other players in World Championships, like you look back at Black Ops 2, you look at Killa and Mir and those guys, but for me, Pristini, for having two games where they played so damn good, I have to put him on this list. For those guys, I have them in between my top 30 and 40, but for me personally, I have Prestini on here. I just think that those two games and the level of competition that he was playing at, how stressful it was at, he deserves to be on here after having those two insane games. Moving on at number 26, we have Proofy, a player with six championships across three titles, an X Games gold medal, a 2013 champs runner up and an eight year tenure. Now for Proofy, the last couple years of his career weren't too great, but he played for so long. And the reason that he deserves to be here and in this 26 spot is because you look at Proofy's career. When you look at the beginning, he was one of the best players, if not the best player in Black Ops 1. And then he moves on to Black Ops 2, where he was one of the better players in that entire tournament. He had that crazy moment on that raid hard point to push it to the World Championship. And then he won an X Games gold medal going into the next game. Their team was in contention throughout the beginning of the game. Like, Proofy has just been a dog, man. He was so good. And people forget how individually talented this player actually was. So for me, I thought about putting him a little bit higher on this list, but he just didn't pick up as many chances championships as he probably should have throughout his career but either way he's a top 30 player undoubtedly unequivocally he deserves to be here so proofy coming in in that 26 spot number 25 we have enabled 10 championships across three titles i mean let me just pull up enable's career real quick because enable a lot of you guys might forget because he's the funny guy on on 100 thieves or you didn't maybe didn't watch back then but this guy was an absolute beast he came from halo he's a multi fps legend the guy won cw anaheim 2019 cw cw london 2019 he won the pro league playoffs in i in world war ii uh, I mean, he has a championship in AW, two championships in AW, three championships in AW, four championships in AW, five championships in AW. The guy is just absolutely disgusting. He came in and ghost, didn't have a lot of success. Then from then on out, he was like into the discussion. No doubt his teamwork, his, le his level of communication that he played at, what he brought to a team, like he brought some intangibles. So for Enable, he 100% deserved to be here. He got dropped from his team in World War II, bounced back, joined another team and won championships. Like you can't deny this guy, whether he was good at search and destroy or not, he was an extremely good respawn player. He knew how to win championships with the right squad. So for me, comes in at number 25. Now, number 24, this was super hard for me to place because I thought this guy should be way higher, but he has a lot of time left in his career and he could definitely move up. But for me, it's Kenny coming in at number 24. Five-time champion, two champs runner-up placings. The guy deserves to be here. I mean, you look at his career and it might not be that long, but he has the back-to-back -back championships in World War II. Not a lot of people have won back-to-back -back championships. He's won five championships total. He's gotten two top two placings at the world championships on the biggest stage. He's just insane, man. And then he has a case where he's the best player in the game. Like, look at World War II. Best player in the game, no doubt on that TK roster. You look at this last game that we just had, and he at one point, he was lighting it up. He was looking like the best they are in the world, but his team just wasn't doing too hot. So for Kenny, the individual talent, it has always been there. The championships, they have come, and he's made it there in the World Championships. It's about knocking down that title. Once he gets a world title, he shoots up the list a little bit. But right now, 24, I think, is a nice place to have him. Coming in at number 23, we have Hook. Four championships, one world title. Looking at Hook's career, obviously, he's just extremely talented SMG. The guy goes out there and gets it done. He has that world title where he won with the Dallas Empire, where he was one of the better players on that team, a top five SMG in that game. And then he's been playing for a while as well. He took a little break because he wasn't 18, but in AW, he was the best player in the game, no doubt. The guy was the scariest player I've ever played against in AW. Not many people have gotten to that level of skill. Multi FPS talent right here. And then looking at Hook's career in Call of Duty, picked up four championships as well. Uh, World War II was a great game for him. Obviously last year, a little bit of turmoil. Uh, looking at his bounce back though, he has a huge opportunity with LAG. So he can move up here on this list, but individual talent, was, uh, and just the eye test watching who I was able to put him a little bit higher on this list than a lot of you guys might have him and that world championship gives him credit to back his name but looking at Hook, I, I think this guy has a long career ahead of him I think when it's all said and done he'll be a top 15 player um, but right now he comes in at 22 or 23 Okay, now coming in at number 22, we have Bance, two-time champs runner-up, 12 second place finishes, and he's a three-time champion. Now for Bance, 
12 second places is freaking unreal two champs runner ups like and three-time champion and what he's done with the toronto ultra bans deserves to be here he has the eu on his back he's got to be the greatest european player of all time and think about the european scene and how tough it has been to compete in that scene in the come up of call of duty they weren't as developed as na they had some catching up to do but bance he's seen so much success for a guy who's had seemingly a target on his back at times where he's been the player prone to the bad game he's rose above that every single time with these rosters that haven't been superstar studded out the gate you look at them on paper the teams never look like they're going to go out and dominate but he wins matches and i think that 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 sort of tenacity and that mental state to be in where he can just focus and get it done and have success with these teams that aren't set up for greatness is impressive. So for me, Bance, he is in that 22 spot, the greatest EU player of all time, and he has a great resume to back it up as well. Coming in at number 21, we have Big Timer. Now, a lot of you guys think that he should be a little bit higher than he is, uh, like top 10 all time. He's not a top 10 player all time, I'll tell you that, but he is in the top 30, and he comes in at 21. He's a 12-time LAN champion, three-time online champion. He's the COD XP champ, and he's a pioneer. I mean, Big Timer was so talented. He was one of the versatile players who can do it with any weapon, one of the first to be able to do that, by the way, and he was the best player on his team for quite some time. So for Big Timer, comes in at 21. He quit before he... Uh, I, I think he quit a little bit too early. He just wasn't having as much fun. I think he could have had some success throughout Ghost, but for him and what he did in those early days of Call of Duty, I mean, best team in the game. Like it was like them and leverage and for Big T, he was going toe to toe. I had some time teaming with him in COD 4. He was even disgusting at that game. One of the best players, if not the best player at a point. So for a big timer, comes in at number 21, just being a top three player for like three years, you deserve to be on here. So an absolute pioneer, everybody show some respect. If you don't know who big timer is, you maybe never watched his gameplay, go back and try to find what you can on YouTube. Just type in big timer call of duty and there'll be a ton of videos to watch so shout out to him respect out to the og coming in at 21. anyways that's gonna do it for 30 through 21 let me know what you guys think now i know that this is gonna be a controversial video i know anytime you make a video about top players at all time people are going to not like it there's gonna be players who think they should be higher there's gonna be fans who think their favorite players should be higher but this is my opinion i use the criteria that i told you about in the beginning of this video and i think i put these guys in the general vicinity where most people should think they are but this is where i believe these players rank in the next video we will go down 20 to 10 it'll be lit and then we got one more video after that to announce the top 10 i hope you guys enjoyed it man i was really stressed making this video but it's fun to finally see these names on a list and get it out and see what you guys think make sure you guys leave a like i know a lot of you guys watch the videos and you don't like it so leave a like it helps the video a lot and i'll see you guys in the next video